Hello, this is Aaron. Welcome to my podcast for July 13th, 2017. You can get all my podcasts at my website at aaron.baher.biz. This is take two on this one. I did it earlier outside, but it turned out there was a little too much wind shear on the phone, I guess. So it didn't sound very good. I'm trying it inside this time with the microphone. Hopefully it'll come out a little better. I didn't do it last night when I had planned to because it's been blazing hot here for the last three days and by last night my brain just wasn't working that well. So I thought I'd put it off till this morning. Didn't get quite the cooling off rain last night that we were supposed to get, but it is better. So I thought my topic for today would be, I guess it's part educational, part political. Um... There's a story that came out last Halloween, about a week before the election. It was on Salon, the website Salon, which normally I'd sooner poke myself in the eye with a fork than read Salon. But it was a topic that I know something about, and I had some conservative Never Trump friends who were, who were uh, passing the story around who thought it was a big deal. Um, they had been kind of a, they had been expecting some sort of big story to come out in the last week before the election and you know they thought maybe that was it they had a they had a theory all along that the Trump campaign was sort of a fake campaign that he was really just running to lose basically or to drop out um although by that by that point I think they had kind of given up on him dropping out but the theory was that he wasn't really a serious candidate, that he was really on the side of the Clintons, and that at some point they were going to break some sort of big news that would either force him to drop out or that would cost him the election. And so this, you know, when this came out a week before the election, we thought, okay, maybe this is supposed to be the big story. So I went ahead and read it. Um, it was a story, and then Hillary Clinton had also... I think retweeted it and it was kind of I don't I, I wouldn't say it was the beginning of the whole Trump Russia nonsense but it was one of the earlier things that got it going so I went and read the article um, and then I posted on a blog I posted a blog comment to say yeah, this is this is nonsense the article doesn't even make sense in the technical details that it's talking about and then I forgot about it because didn't it didn't have any effect on the election anyway and so it didn't seem that important and the thing is i i never was able to take the whole russia business seriously because i'm old enough to remember when the democrats loved russia um when russia was the soviet union they were big fans and they were angry anytime someone like ronald reagan put up any resistance to russia you know to the soviets um, they weren't all card-carrying communists, but they were certainly um, admirers of communism and socialism in a lot of ways. I mean, Bernie Sanders nearly won the Democrat nomination, and he is a an open, avowed socialist. So, you know, like I say, they were they were big fans of Russia. Um, you know, Bill Clinton visited there when he was young. He was when it wasn't easy to get into Russia as an American. They generally only took people who they thought they could make a certain impression on. It wasn't, you know, you couldn't just, you certainly couldn't just walk in and out back then. You know, that was, that was when they shot people who tried to escape. And Democrats thought it was a, a pretty cool place back then. And it was, a big sh it was a big shock to them when the Berlin Wall came down and, and we found out some of the things that were really going on in there. So it was just bizarre to have them suddenly saying that to even communicate with Russia or be friendly with Russia or, you know, make any sort of deals with Russia is somehow evil or traitorous or something. It's just, I never could even take that seriously because it was so obviously bizarre. So this came up again a couple days ago because... 
that came out that the person who did the story or who was kind of behind the story back then or who provided the information for the story, um, some more information about that person came out. And I don't know who tracked it down exactly, if it was the 4chan uh, poll guys or, or who it was, but it came out that it's someone at a, at a U.S. university who goes by the name Tea Leaves and turns out tea leaves also posted a lot of anti-trump stuff during the campaign and and since i suppose and so you know it all it all sort of adds up but i thought because i know something about the topic maybe i'd try to explain a little bit what i think happened behind the article um what because i don't think it was necessarily just totally invented i think someone probably did actually see something but either they didn't understand what it was or twisted it into something else or when they passed it on to the journalist, the journalist said, okay, here's what we can make that look like. Um, and so that, that ended up being the article. So the article talked about DNS. So first I need to explain what DNS is. Um, DNS is kind of like the phone book of the Internet. Um, computers on the Internet talk to each other by numbers or they identify each other by numbers not by names you know we use names but they just use these numbers so if you think of it like phone numbers you know your phone has a a number and that number has you know parts you know you have the if you're in the US the first part is the international code which is one then you have the area code then you have the three digit prefix and then you have the four digit last part so you, you know, if you think of a phone number, it's four parts. Well, then if you don't want to have to remember a lot of phone numbers, you can use a phone book or a or speed dial or whatever, where you say, okay, this this name goes with this number, and then you don't have to remember the number. Well, computers on the internet are similar. They know each other by numbers. Every every computer on the internet has a number. Or it's, it's actually a set of four numbers. So, for instance, my computer, if I look it up real quick here, my computer's current address on the Internet is 66.226.119.11. So that is my address. It's not actually the address of my computer that I'm sitting at. It's the address of the one that connects my house to the Internet. But anyway that's where my traffic would be coming from if i if i connect to your computer that's where you're going to see me coming from is that address 66.226.119.11 if you want to connect to my computer that's the address you have to connect to and we and that's they're all known by these four digit number these four part numbers each part is a each part is a number between 0 and 255 so obviously you don't want to have to know the number or the four part number of everything that you want to talk to on the internet when you're browsing or sending email or whatever so what you do is you have to have something that when you click on you know a yahoo.com link your computer has to have some way to find out okay what is the number of the computer i need to go to to get yahoo.com information and that's where dns comes in um, DNS stands for Domain Name Service, and what a, what a DNS server does is it just sits there and answers name to number requests. It takes requests, and if you ask it for yahoo.com, it comes back and says yahoo.com is whatever. Like if I look one up right now, if I look up yahoo.com, my computer asks a DNS server and it comes back and says that's 206.190.36.45 okay so that has to happen every time you click something your computer has to go out and find out what is the number that goes with that okay so and sometimes a single click might require a few different lookups because there can be multiple things on a page that are coming from different servers and each one has to be looked up 
So you want this to happen as quickly as possible because that has to happen before your computer can even go talk to the actual server that has the information that you requested. So this needs to happen pretty quickly. You don't want it you don't want a half second delay every time you have to look up one of these n names and get the number. And so usually you want to use a DNS server that's close to you on the network that will respond as quickly as possible. So there's a couple different ways that that can be set. You can just tell your computer by putting numbers in a file, here's my DNS server, here's where you need to get here's where you need to talk to to look up names or the way for most people it works is when you connect to the internet with your computer or your phone or whatever your your internet provider that you connect to then passes you DNS servers to use and you use those and so it will tell you here's the one to use and it will it will typically be one that's right there at your at your provider um, now you can use one that's off somewhere else like if you want to use Google's they have one you can use that's at 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 so if you don't have a local one for some reason or if it's broken or whatever you don't want to use it you can use Google's by putting that in 8.8.8.8 .8 then all your DNS requests will go off to Google's server now that'll take a little longer so you don't do that if you don't have to but that you can do that and with networks being faster these days that's not as big of a a big of a hit as it used to be but the point is when you do these requests when you ask a DNS server here's a name what's the number you're talking directly to it you don't just send these requests out everywhere that you don't just broadcast them out across the internet because if you did we'd we'd all flood the whole thing and nothing would work you com you communicate directly to a DNS server and you say here's a name what's the number and it comes back to you so no one can sit out there somewhere else on the internet and just watch your DNS requests if they could we'd all be doing it all the time we just you know journalists would just watch DNS requests coming out of the White House for instance and say hey what are people at the White House looking looking up well here's ones going to yahoo.com well here's ones going to you know pornsite.com well, that's interesting so you can't just watch other people's DNS requests unless you're sitting on the network between them and their DNS server which is usually hard to do because usually they're close together okay so what the article said first of all the, the first thing in the article was it said this person who I guess was tea leaves was actually looking for malware or scanning for malware now malware what we normally mean by malware um, mal is from the Latin meaning bad or harmful malware normally means harmful software viruses things like that usually when people in the business talk about malware they mean something you have to go get like something you get because you loaded a, a web page and there was dangerous software on it which your computer then got infected by usually it's not something that just comes in from the outside and gets in without you doing anything um, we would usually call that something else we'd call that a an intrusion rather than malware but you know that's one of those things where I figure okay the journalist maybe didn't really understand the terminology used a word that wasn't quite right and that's that's fine but that's what it said was that this person was scanning for malware and saw DNS requests coming from a server in Russia for this Trump email domain okay well like I explained before about DNS if a server in Russia needs the address for Trump Trump dash email dot com it doesn't just send that out everywhere it doesn't just ask the internet hey anybody out there know this address it asks its own local DNS server or maybe it's configured to use Google's 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 and it asks that but the point is when it sends its request and says hey I need the number for trump-email.com it sends it to a specific place it doesn't just send it out to everyone including tea leaves sitting there at a US University so 
tea leaves wasn't just intercepting DNS requests going everywhere. If DNS requests came into tea leaves's computer, they had to be sent directly to tea leaves's computer. Now, no Russian server was asking tea leaves's computer, "Hey, what's the number for trump-email.com?" because it wouldn't be configured to use that. Not knowing tea leaves, that wouldn't make any sense. So, putting putting together the fact that they claimed these were DNS requests and they were scanning for malware, what I figured happened was if you want to know, if you want to watch for intrusion attempts, one thing you can do is you set up a computer, you set up what's sometimes it's called a honeypot, you set up a computer which pretends to be something like a DNS server and it takes incoming requests but doesn't actually, it's not actually being a DNS server, it's just tracking those requests, it's just logging them so that it can say, hmm, we got somebody trying to break in here and from this address, and we got somebody trying to break in from this address. Because if you set up a DNS server and you haven't told anyone to use your DNS server, then the only requests you're going to get are going to be from intruder intrusion attempts because intruders work kind of like telemarketers. You know, telemarketers just start going down a list of, of phone numbers. They just have these war dialers that just start dialing phone numbers looking for somebody to answer. Well, that's kind of the way intrusions, intruders work on computers is they will just start trying different computers, connect and see, hey, can I break into this? Is, is there a security hole here? Historically, DNS, not so much in, in the past several years, but there was a time when DNS was a major security hole. There were, there were security problems found in it every so often, exploits that could be, you know, holes that could be exploited. And so if you wanted to, if you wanted to break into systems and you knew about this exploit in DNS, you would just start trying computers and you would say, okay, you would, you'd connect to port 53 because, um, I guess I'll explain that computers on the internet have ports. A port is, if you think of it kind of like, kind of like a wall of mailboxes. Um, you know, you at it like in a, like at an apartment building, the whole apartment building has one address, but then there's a mailbox for each apartment and ports on a computer are kind of like that where, okay, you've, you've come to the address, you know, you've come to my address 66.226.119.11. But now what do you want to talk to? Do you want to talk to my mail server or my DNS server or my web server or what? Well, by, by talking to a certain port, you, you tell my computer what it is you want to talk to kind of like by putting something in a particular mailbox in an apartment building, you get it to the right person. So if you want to talk to the web server, you talk to port 80. If you want to talk to the mail server, you talk to port 25. If you want to talk to the DNS server, you talk to port 53. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you're trying to break into systems using a DNS exploit, you just start connecting to computers randomly or going through a list or whatever, connecting to them on port 53 and trying the exploit to see if you get in. Now, as part of the exploit, you need to do a request. You need to ask for something. You know, you need to say, here's a name, what's the number for it? And so you're going to give it something that you're looking up as part of that exploit, you know, you because you've got to talk to it to break into it. And so that's the point where it could be, it could ask for something like trump-email.com. So that's what I think he was probably seeing, this tea leaves, he or she, was in, intrusion attempts, asking for different domains, and saw one coming from Russia that was asking for trump-email.com. It may have been asking for other things too, but that's one of the things it was asking for. Which means there was no, he's not seeing communication between the Russian server and the Trump server. 
because the DNS request has to come before that communication. You can't talk to a computer until you've done the DNS request, found out the number of the computer, and then you go talk to it. You know, it's like, this is like, you, you can't have a phone conversation with someone until you've looked up the phone number and dialed the phone number. You know, whether, whether you're doing that with speed dial or whatever, but this is still at the looking up the number stage. So even though the article implied that he was somehow seeing communication between the Russian server and the Trump server, that's not what it, that's not what it said. What it said was he was seeing a Russian server asking for the address of the Trump server and doing this occasionally on an intermittent basis. <clears throat> so that's what was actually described in the article when you get down to the details was something like that was that okay we see this server in Russia it's doing these requests for a Trump domain we wonder why it wants to connect to this Trump domain <clears throat> but that doesn't actually tell you that there's anything going on between the Russian server and the Trump domain because for one thing if the Russian server really wanted to talk to the Trump server it wouldn't be going out and asking tea leaves his computer for the address it would just ask its local dns for the address which it would give it because it, the, these things aren't secrets um and the other thing is uh, just on a on a deeper level if you want two computers to communicate and you're doing something nefarious you're going to they're already going to know about each other they're not going to have to discover each other's addresses you know, it, it's, it's, it's silly. So that's kind of, that's, that's what I get out of the articles. If, if the whole thing wasn't just made up, if somebody did actually see something in a log and say, wow, this looks suspicious, then that's what I figure probably they saw. They didn't really understand either the, the tech tea leaves either didn't, didn't really understand what he was looking at or pass the information along to somebody who didn't understand or who just didn't care who just said "Ooh, look russian server trump server connection let's run with it we've only got a week left till the election um and that's what they did so like i said it would have just gone away because it didn't matter but then they decided the russia thing was going to be their big scandal for some reason and so they keep dragging it back up and so now we've you know now we're going to find out okay who is tea leaves you know why was tea leaves pushing this idea um, the other thing is that in the article they claimed that nine computer scientists had looked at the log had looked at the log from tea leaves dns and said that it looked not only did it look authentic but that it's nearly impossible to fake such a thing now that's just a lie um, a DNS log, first of all, n people normally don't keep DNS logs because DNS servers just handle so many requests that it would be ridiculous to try to keep logs and nobody, nobody would want to. There's no reason to normally. Now, it makes sense in this case, if they were doing what I think, if it wasn't just a regular DNS server, it was actually somebody running a honeypot DNS to catch intruders then it makes sense that you would be keeping a log because you want to see where the intruders were coming from. But normal DNS, no, you don't keep logs. But a log, if you do keep one, a log is just a text file. It's just a text file with a line for each, or you know, or, or it could be records in a database, but typically it's a text file with a line for each request. And in a DNS log, it's gonna it's gonna have a timestamp each request it's going to say where it came from what did it ask for and what did you tell it that's that's going to be it it's going to have that information for each request in a long long file because it's just a text file of course you can fake it of course you could take lot you now you, you could look at it you could bring me a dns log and i could look at it and say yep that looks like a dns log but you're not going to be able to prove to me that you didn't edit it and that you didn't add some lines or take out some lines or edit some lines that's virtually impossible now you could prove that you haven't edited it since a certain date if 
you saved a, a hash, what's called a hash signature of the file, and sent that off, put that out in public somewhere where other people could get it and you wouldn't have control over it, well, then you could prove that it hadn't been changed since then. But you still couldn't prove that you didn't change it before you took that hash signature. So this idea that nine computer scientists, and first of all, that's a tell, because in the, in the article they keep calling tea leaves and these other nine people computer scientists, which nobody who actually works in the business calls himself a computer scientist. That's something people at the university call themselves because they take computer science classes, they take CS classes. But if you actually work in this stuff, you call yourself a network engineer or a software engineer or a security, security consultant or something along those lines. Nobody calls himself a computer scientist who actually works with computers, except people who do it in a classroom. So odds are the nine people, if they exist at all, are just other students or teachers aides or whoever in tea leaves his lab or you know friends at other universities or whatever who said yeah it looks looks like a log you know it looks like a dns log and boy it would be you know i i don't know on what basis they even claim that you couldn't fake one um because like i say if you, if you if you control a computer you can do whatever you want on that computer. I mean, not only can I edit the log if it's on my computer, I can edit the modification time of the log. And I can, if I have a log from last month, I can edit that log, add some lines to it, save it, and then change the modification time back to last month. I mean, these are all basic things. You can't, as long as you control it, you can do whatever you want with it. Like I say, the only exception would be if you were somehow verifying the existence of these things from the moment they were created with hashes that were going out to third parties that you had no control over. And nobody's doing that. Nobody's claimed to be doing that. And that would be insane, especially when you're, when you're claiming that these were just logs that you were just generating as part of your daily business and you just happen to notice something weird in one. You know, nobody would be going to that kind of an extreme to be sure that log that DNS logs were authentic without knowing that they were going to find something, you know, explosive in one. There's just no there's no reason for it. It doesn't make any sense. So now, you know, because they keep pushing keep pushing this Russia thing and now that we found out that you know the woman who tried to get a meeting with Donald Trump Jr. by saying that she had dirt on the Clintons you know we find out yesterday that she was in the country without a visa on permission of the Obama administration of the Obama Justice Department you know so now people wonder why that is. Why was a Russian lawyer roaming around the United States without a visa, lobbying to have American laws changed? Because that's what she actually wanted to meet about. The part about having dirt on the Clintons wasn't even true. That was just to try to get him to the meeting. She was actually roaming around lobbying lots of different people to get this, to get this law from 2012 changed because it puts restrictions on Russian businesses like her boss. Um, her boss, who looks like apparently he was under investigation at the time for millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in uh, money laundering. So, you know, now people are going to try to find out, okay, why were, you know, why was a lawyer for somebody under investigation for violating U.S. laws roaming around the United States with the Obama administration's permission, you know, illegally? And the more these people keep pushing this, the more, you know, the more of this kind of stuff is going to come out because they were the ones who were meddling in the Ukraine for the last eight years. You know, they were the ones meddling in Syria for the last eight years. They're the ones who have all these connections. They're the ones who have been taking the foreign donations and, and all that. So, you know, they're, they're shooting themselves in the foot with this stuff, but I guess they can't help it. I guess they just can't stop because they don't really know what else to do. So 
I suppose the next thing I, th I think I think 4chan is on it. Um, they'll f they'll find out more about tea leaves. Uh, some people think tea leaves might be a woman. Not that that matters, I guess, but it'll make her easier to identify, um, since women in this business are are pretty rare. And I suppose you know they may have to track down the nine people if they exist who claimed that you can't fake a DNS log, um, and you know figure out where they're coming from and how politically involved they are. So it should be fun. Um, like I say, I, I I would have written about this or done something on it back when the original article came out last Halloween, but I just didn't I didn't take it seriously because it was so obviously not true. And once the election was over, I thought, well, you know, that's the end of that. But it turns out it's not, so we get to keep talking about it and get to keep digging into why these people were were running these articles and who was running them and you know why were they why were they generating these this fake news. Um, you know, CNN isn't the only fake news outlet. I mean, they're all all the mainstream outlets do fake news, and Salon is certainly no exception to that. Um, so it should be fun. You know, the more the more they push, the more the more we'll push back, the more we'll dig, and they have plenty to hide. So I think that's it for this podcast. So I'll be back in another day or two with one. Uh, thanks for listening, and have a good day.